I literally can't go on Twitter without hearing either people upset about the presentation of the booster pass, or people making posts about how everybody else is just nitpicking. I'm sick of hearing about it, so here's my two cents. Mario Kart 8 is one of my favorite games of all time. It's such a high quality experience. I mean, this game came out on the Wii U, and it looked this good. And of course, the fact that it controls well and is extremely fun also helps. From that standpoint, the booster pass is great. I mean, more Mario Kart 8 is great. So any excuse to play more of it is fine by my book. Although whether you're a fan or not, it's hard to deny that there was a noticeable downgrade in quality, at least in regards to what we've come to expect from Mario Kart 8. And here's the thing, if this is how Mario Mario Kart 8 always looked, I don't think anyone would bat an eye. I mean, the Switch is a handheld system, and for what it's worth, it's not ugly or anything. Most of us are not familiar with what sort of hardware specs translate to what level of fidelity, so without a frame of reference. A lot of us would probably just look at these tracks and go, yeah, this is the best it can look on Switch. The problem is that we do have something to compare the DLC to. Mario Kart 8 is an absolutely gorgeous game. Like, we're talking so good, I can't even begin to comprehend how they optimized it this well. I mean, it runs at 1080p at 60 frames and still looks this good? That's insane. And if Nintendo can get this game to look this good in 2014, then eight years later, why is this a standard that everybody is okay with? I've heard the claim all over Twitter that those who are critical over the visuals are only noticing these things because they're stopping dead in their tracks to point them out. But when people stop to take a screenshot, that's only done because that is the most practical way to show something you notice while racing. I mean, unless there are some butthurt people going out of their way to nitpick these things. But even then, you don't need to pause the race to notice things like the grass doesn't have a texture, or that those flags aren't animated, those bushes aren't textured. You can't even pretend you have to go out of your way to notice this one, since you're here staring at them until the race starts. Even more so if you're playing this online and are waiting for everybody to load in. Or the water here, which is something that I noticed while just racing normally on stream. Oh my god, that water looks really bad. Holy shit, I didn't even notice that until right there. That water looks really bad. Oh my gosh, hold on, I gotta go back. Look how bad that water looks. What the fuck? Like, Mario Kart 8 has really good looking water in some of the maps. I don't know why they wouldn't just use some of the water they already have. You don't need to go out of your way to notice any of these things. It's one thing to have a screenshot of somebody facing the wall, but if I take a normal still, looking forward the direction you are supposed to look, and that looks cheap, then that's where the criticism is coming from. Even more so when you compare it to a base game equivalent. If these tracks were some of the best layouts we've ever seen regardless of visuals, it would be easier to overlook. But with the exception of Ninja Hideaway, which has some questionable design choices in of itself, most of these DLC picks feel fairly rudimentary. Even maps like Coconut Mall, which is one of my all-time favorite maps on Wii, isn't represented as strongly as it could have been. It is true that Nintendo is taking a different stylistic approach than what we've seen in the base game, and there's two major things I want to comment on on that regard. The first is consistency. Mario Kart 8 uses a more semi-realistic art style. I mean, it's still very Mario, but you have textures and models that feel more familiar to real world equivalents. The Booster Pass, on the other hand, uses an art style that is more colorful, stylistic, and more, well, Mario. I personally prefer the 8 art style, but I completely understand why some might prefer the more cartoony visuals, and that's fair enough. It's all subjective anyway. However, if you are making DLC for a pre-existing game, it's smart to cohere to the style already established. Otherwise, it is really jarring when you go from a course that looks like this, to a course that looks like this, within the confines of the same game. Secondly, Nintendo has shown through games such as Mario 3D World just how great the more cartoony style, you know, with the bright colors, but trees and all, can look in a more polished format, which, mind you, is another game that came out on the Wii U. So if Nintendo really wants to diverge and go another direction artistically, then they are not limited to the primitive look seen in the DLC. There's also the standpoint that these maps look better than their tour versions. And yeah, it does look better than Mario Kart Tour. But Mario Kart Tour shouldn't be the standard, because when Mario Kart Tour came out, I think we were all on the same page. Yeah, it doesn't look as good as Mario Kart 8, but for a mobile game, this isn't half bad. But but now that we are back in Mario Kart 8, you can't say it's good enough because it looks better than a game that isn't Mario Kart 8. I mean, if I was going to brag about how good Legends Arceus looked, I wouldn't compare it to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I would compare it to, what's considered at the time, the best looking Pokemon game. Because if your game sincerely looks good on its own merits, you shouldn't have to punch down. The biggest offense I've heard for the lack of polish is the low asking price, which while this is easily the best argument against 
the Booster Packs critics. Let's really look at this. So 48 tracks for $25 is really good, regardless of quality. But I think it's only fair to compare it to the pricing the original DLC got back on Wii U. The DLC on Wii U gave you 16 new tracks, 12 new vehicles and accessories, and 6 new characters. Altogether, that was 12 bucks. Since the new Booster Pass does not have new characters or vehicles, let's try to measure those on their own and give them a price tag. If Nintendo is selling 6 new characters as their own DLC, I think it's reasonable to guess they would charge $4 for all of them. Low balling here. 12 vehicles and accessories? Uh, I think $3 is a safe assumption. Again, low balling here. If Nintendo removed the characters and the vehicles from the $12 DLC, how much would the 16 tracks be on their own? As a bundle, let's just say the 12 vehicles and parts, alongside the 6 new characters, is valued at 4 bucks if you were to exclusively remove those from the track bundle. Subtracting that from the base price, we're left at 50 cents a track on the original pricing. And if we do the math like that, the booster pass is more expensive on average, with each track being 52 cents each. But even if we ignore the fact that the original Wii U DLC included more than just maps, each map would still only be 75 cents. And there is certainly more than 25 cents worth of additional effort there per track. With the Wii U DLC, they made brand new tracks with brand new assets and everything. Whereas in the booster pack, we have all of the tour models of minimal effort put in to enhance them. To even say Nintendo is putting in half the effort they put in with the Wii U DLC would be extremely generous. Again, I don't want anyone to think I'm saying the DLC is bad or that you shouldn't enjoy it, because I bought the DLC and I'm enjoying it. But Nintendo is a company with a net worth of $64 billion. Their net sales from last year was nearly $16 billion alone. So if Nintendo was able to make maps that looked this good during the Wii U era, where they were only making a fourth of what they're making now, then it should be apparent that this is not the most Nintendo is capable of. Please believe me when I say that my criticisms come from a place of admiration. I want Nintendo to do better, and I know they can do better. Proof that they can is a single button press away on the menu. I'm not saying complain about everything, but if you've bought something, and you genuinely believe it isn't up to the standard you usually expect from a company, I think it's completely fair to voice your thoughts. If this were just a minor argument, I wouldn't have even bothered doing a video on this. But people have been so antagonistic about this on social media. There are so many posts with thousands of upvotes essentially parroting, if you're critiquing the visuals, it's only because you're going out of your way to complain. And here's the deal, if you're actually doing that, Stop. That's not cool. Nonetheless, I don't think that's the case. Mario Kart 8 is one of my favorite games ever, so I bought the DLC, raced on these tracks normally, and noticed these things. You don't need to go all boundary break and take a free cam to notice that these flower beds are practically using PS1 geometry. The drop in quality is way more obvious than apologists on Twitter want you to believe. There's this common notion among Nintendo's biggest critics that the Switch's hardware leaves it incapable of standing up against newer releases on other platforms. But the cool thing about Mario Kart Part 8 is that it spits on that notion, especially for a handheld. This game really holds its own weight. And while I will defend the visuals of Base 8 any day of the week, I worry how the Nintendo fanbase looks to outsiders when you have so many people antagonizing anyone saying Nintendo is capable of more, especially when you read posts like this. There's two types of Mario Kart 8 players in 2022, those who highly enjoy this unrivaled gameplay, and those obsessed with the visual quality of grass. Guess which ones have happier lives? This Justin, man supposedly happier than people around him, makes a post about how he's happier than people around him. Something that someone who is truly happy would totally do. Man, if you like the unrivaled gameplay, just wait until you see the other 48 tracks in the game. Even if we just look at the Wii U DLC, Mute City, Hyrule Circuit, Wild Woods, Big Blue? What in Booster Pack 1 even comes close to the speed and scope of Big Blue? You flip upside down and drive under a ceiling of water. That's amazing! You're saying the lackluster visuals are okay because the 8 tracks have unrivaled gameplay when you literally have an entirely separate menu of more graphically impressive maps that rival the gameplay. Am I the only person who played the rest of Mario Kart 8? You can't enjoy playing the new DLC and still want Nintendo to do better. If you're a real supporter of Nintendo, you bought a Wii U, you bought Mario Kart 8, and you bought that Wii U DLC. 
And if I just described you, don't let anyone who just walks in with their Switch after they just got done shitting on the Wii U tell you that you need to be more grateful for DLC for a game you've bought twice and have been playing for years before them that looks worse than the DLC on the console they make fun of. You guys shit on the Wii U all the time. A console that gave us Smash 4, Bayonetta 2, 3D World, Pikmin 3, Tropical Freeze, Mario Kart 8. Games that not only played great, but looked great. Night and day you shit on this thing. But this is what needs defending? DLC that's probably going to outsell the Wii U itself in a matter of weeks? This is the thing that people aren't being grateful enough for? Okay, I'm done. Video is over. I'm clearly getting too old for this. I'm practically arguing if kids have my age at this point who don't want their fragile billion dollar company to be criticized. I've been in love with Nintendo since the 90s and now I'm not allowed to want them to do what I know they're capable of? If you bought the DLC, I hope you're enjoying it and having fun with your buds, but fuck man, what is my life? Hey, thanks for watching. I'd like to give a special thanks to my patrons such as Abby Knutson, Albium, Amanda Guth, David Pacheco, Drew Kellenberger, Gameplayer1500, Hunter Martin, John Hancock, Kinzel Tien, Michael Moose, Naomi Norbez, Victoria Mars, Rami Batter, and your boy Buzzby. Also, between you and me, I'm working on a tabletop game and I'm gonna probably be showing it off pretty soon, so get hyped. Again, thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good one.